it seemed like a lot of conference centers were going to just um, wireless connections. And one of the things that all of us in the live streaming business do is go to the site, test that wired connection, and if there's not a wired connection, I won't go live. And because you're just risking too much. You, you spend all this money and you may or may not, you may have problems with the wireless. And you can speak to that, Thomas. This is more your area of expertise, but I always go yeah. to the site, make sure that the upload speeds are great enough. So yeah, that's yeah. a great point for you to speak to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I will do anything <laughs> If the only thing available is wireless, I'll do it. It's certainly not recommended and I don't like it. Uh, but in that scenario, I am always very upfront with my clients because, you know, as with anything in live streaming, you really, unless you really build redundancy into your workflows, which means maybe backup internet sources, maybe backup uh, transmission plans, maybe a backup video switcher, you know, things happen, things go down. So it's possible to stream from Wi-Fi. It's certainly not recommended, but for me, as long as the client understands, hey, I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that things work, but sometimes things are just out of our hands and Wi-Fi is one of those red flags that I'll throw up and say, we can do this if you want, but you know, it's really not recommended, but if it's the only option and you're willing to take on that risk, then I'm happy to do it. Um, but, you know, Donna, I haven't seen and I haven't worked at many um, event centers here in Atlanta just yet. But typically these event centers, conference centers, hotel ballrooms, all of these places have IT staff. And if you ask the right questions and you push hard enough and if you know, you're, if our clients, the people who are hiring us for their events are on board, then, and they're paying all this money to rent the space, then typically the IT departments will work with us and they will give us a wired connection and they will help us try to make sure that we have dedicated internet or whatever it is that we need to make sure that it's going to go as well as possible. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, and if the worst thing that happens is that your live broadcast doesn't look so good or they're stuttering or drop frames or whatever it is, you you still have an edited event because of the equipment that you're bringing and that sort of thing. So you have a great quality. Most of us, I think, who live stream always record it internally. So even if there's something wrong with it, a lot of times your file that you'll have as soon as the event is done is still perfect and you can put that out. So yeah. all is not lost, but yeah, yeah, if you're counting on a great live stream, um, I just always like to have a wired connection, but I know 5G is probably coming out soon and maybe yeah. that's great, but yeah, it's it's just something to think about. Like you said, if, if yeah. you can live with it, that if something went wrong and even Skype, we're depending on, you know, the Skype yeah. connection and yeah. so far it's been fine, but, yeah. But and you the, just never know when you have to depend on that. And the other thing on that front, which a lot of people don't, if you don't really know about live streaming, you know, all of these encoders, I mentioned the idea of an encoder that takes your video and pushes it up to the internet. All of these encoders will typically have controls where you can look at your internet speed. And of course, you always want to push a 1080 high quality HD stream, but if you arrive on site and realize, oh, hey, I don't have the upload speed, I don't have the bandwidth to push that high quality of a stream, you have manual controls where you can, you know, control the resolution that you're sending out, you can control the bit rate that you're sending out. So typically, as long as you have some stability with the internet line, and you don't have a bunch of, you know, random things happening where someone decides they're going to connect and upload a movie to the internet. Uh, you can control your output to match whatever kind of internet connection you have. And uh, typically we'll recommend having at least twice as much upload bandwidth as what you plan on sending out from your encoder. So if you're planning on sending out a two megabit stream, will typically want to make sure you have at least four megabits of upload speed to send that stream out, have some headroom to make sure that 
you know, you have fluctuations. Anytime you're sending a stream out, it's never a fixed number. It's constantly fluctuating based on how much data there is, if there's a lot of movement in your imagery, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but you can, you can kind of tailor what you're doing to fit what you have available to you.